Evening, everyone. Uh, on behalf of ICC Securities, we welcome you to the Q2 FY24 Earnings Call of Suzlon Energy Limited. Today, we have with us the top management of the company, being represented by Mr. G. P. Chalsani, Group CEO, and Mr. Manchu Modi, Group CFO. I now hand over the manage. I now hand over the call to the management for their opening remarks. Post which, we will open the floor for Q and A. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, Ashwini. Um, Sasani here. Uh, good evening, and thank you for joining us on Q2 FI24 earnings call. I hope you had an opportunity to review our results and investor presentation. I will first start sharing with you an overview of the industry, and then we'll walk you through our Q2 performance. We will then take your questions. With good policy initiatives from the government, the wind energy sector has got much needed uh, impetus. There are policies to strengthen the sector, driving India's green transition, like the concrete guidelines and policies uh, of uh, RPO obligations under Energy Conservation Act, with specific RPO for wind turbines commission post 1st April 2024, and the policy on uh, uh, policy on implementation of pool tariff mechanism, which will I think go in a significant way of accelerating the wind growth. The 2030 GOA target of 500 gigawatts of non-fossil fuel-based capacity includes a healthy mix of wind and solar capacities. The idea is to have both solar and wind to coexist and not compete with each other. This helps in diversity of generation sources and is also healthy from the perspective of grid health. The fact that wind is available during the late evening and night when the power demand in India peaks helps balance the power generation profile and also supports the grid. Initiatives like uh, discontinuation of e-reverse bidding for wind will help in growth of wind sector. The good part is that under the new bidding regime, wind capacity will come up in all eight windy states, significantly opening up the availability of land and evacuation infrastructure. The procedure for determination of uniform RE tariff is also announced, which, as I mentioned earlier, uh, recently, which will help in reducing the average cost of procurement of power through pooling of tariffs. The leading renewable energy states of the country like Gujarat, Maharashtra, Rajasthan and Telangana have also introduced the proactive RE policies to further their state energy transition journeys. We expect even others, other windy states to follow the same. We have an order book of 1613 megawatt as of 30th September 2023. This is a well diversified and healthy order book. In addition to this, we also have a very strong order pipeline and recently we announced an order from Jennifer of 50.4 megawatts. Our priority going forward is to pursue quality orders with higher value and better margins. The, the process for all of them listing for 3 megawatt turbine has been completed from our side and we expect this to be listed as early as next week. We have started the commercial supplies of 3 megawatt turbines. We also installed the first prototype of this turbine with 160 meters hub, which is the second proto actually, but first one with 160 meters hub height in Gujarat, which will further reduce the LCOE. Our focus for H2 remains on executing and building our order book. Our OMS business continues to do well with 14.3 gigawatts capacity in India. The growth of wind sector will also help SE Forge as the major revenue comes from the supply of wind components. With the strong fundamentals and social and sectoral tailwind, Sujalan is now well to leverage the market opportunity arising from the energy transition. With this, now I will ask Imanshu to take you through the financial performance before we open up for questions. Thank you. Thank you, JP, sir, and good evening to ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I would be using slide numbers 18 to 24 of our investor presentation as a reference point during this discussion. Our IR presentation has been uploaded on the website and also sent to the stock exchanges. So for the Q2 uh, FY24, uh, we've done deliveries of 132 megawatts, um, uh, totaling up to a total of 267 uh, megawatts in the first half of this financial year. The company has also posted a very consistent and robust performance uh, across all business segments with improved KPIs, uh, in the H1 of FY24 on a year-on-year -year basis. A Q2 FY24 has seen us register consistent improvement in all our key parameters. More importantly, our balance sheet has now come, uh, become even more stronger 
and the fundamentals have strengthened uh, due to the bottom uh, as a result of a strong bottom line. We are pleased to report that the company has ended 30th September 2023 with a strong consolidated net worth of 3,409 crores. Post the QIP, there is no residual debt in the company except a very nominal debt of rupees 120 crores in one of the subsidiaries of the company, which is SE Forge. Uh, this leaves the company with a net debt of about close to 600 crores, meaning a gross cash balance of about 720 crores uh, with the company. The company has been able to turn around this balance sheet significantly from March 2020, uh, at which point our debt was uh, overall 13,000 crores to a net debt of 600 crores today. Pursuant to the debt reduction, net cash, sorry. Pursuant to debt reduction, we have achieved a substantial reduction of 61% in our finance cost in Q2 FY24 of rupees 36 crores. These are the Q2 FY23 of rupees 92 crores. The full benefit of debt reduction in terms of finance costs will be visible from the next quarter, which is Q3 FY24, as the QIP this year got concluded in August, uh, through which we were able to reduce our debt. Our consolidated PAT before exceptional items for Q2 stood at 136 crores and for H1 stood at 230 crores. This is, of course, against Q2 FY23 PAT of rupees 53 crores. So the economy and the industry are on a very strong footing, and the sectoral tailwinds that we're facing are fairly strong, which puts us, Suzanne, with the very strong balance sheet and performance parameters to uh, well capture the market opportunity. With that, I'd like to conclude my presentation, and we can open the floor for any Q&A that the callers may have. Thank you. Thank you so much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Nikhil Abiyankar from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir. Thanks for the opportunity and congrats on a good set of numbers. So in H1, we have executed somewhere around 270 megawatt, and we are st but still we are below the FI, H1 FI23 level. So uh, are we in a good position to give a guidance uh, as per our, what our execution will be in FI24? I think the, uh, the, our guidance always uh, remains the same, is that the H1 to H2, there is always a difference, uh, uh, not just for us, for the wind sector as a whole. Uh, the, uh, the normally, normally, it's expected that it will be anywhere close to the double of what is in H1. Even if you look at, uh, as a country, we did about 1.5 gigawatts in the H1. And then now we're all talking about doing about 4.5 to 5 gigawatts. Obviously, that if it is double 3 gigawatts in H2, that's when we reach 4.5 gigawatts in India. Normally, that's, that's the thumb rule. I'm not giving you guidance, but this is what normally it works as principle. So, and uh, in Q2, we reported an epic loss from the WTEG segment. So, what any specific reason for it? So, can you come again? Which segment? Uh, WTEG segment reported a bit loss in Q2 of around 7 crores. So, it is in the segmental reporting is largely, of course, due to the uh, depreciation. All of it sits in the WTEG segment. Um, and as you know, uh, O and M business and SE Forge would be light on the depreciation. Um, so it's largely as a result of the depreciation. Most of the 50 crores sits in the WT segment. But in the last quarter, we had made a profit. So I, I was from that point of view, I was asking. So last if you look at yeah, if you look at the last quarter, uh, EBITDA, you know, for WTG segment would have been in the ballpark region. This quarter is. About 30 crores. Uh, Q1 last uh, in the FY24 would have been about 35 crores. So there is not marked a difference. So with similar volumes, uh, EBITDA number is broadly the same. Okay. 
for the WTE segment. Okay. And sir, any views on the offshore tender that is expected in Q4? And how are we pleased to participate in this opportunity? So let's see, offshore, uh, there is, uh, as you know, that they have issued the uh, uh, intention to come up with a tender. That's a notification which came in. Uh, as you know, that they're talking about three models of bidding. One is the, they say that they will bid about 500 megawatts in Tamil Nadu, 500 in Gujarat, uh, based on VGF. Then the model B they're talking about is that they will ask for the lease rights for the area based on the bidding. And then they will be given X amount of time to go ahead and develop, but without uh, any offtake guarantee. So... Uh, and the third model is that you can go and develop your own uh, seabed, and then they will do a bidding, and you have a right of first refusal, almost like a Swiss challenge. Uh, right now, they are talking about the model B. Uh, when it comes, let's see that we are we are getting prepared ourselves uh, the, for participation. See, as, as you know, that whenever the bidding comes, we don't participate ourselves directly. Mm -hmm. We actually have a pre-bid tie-up with somebody who is going to actually participate. So the same work we will do, that because we are not the bidders for this, but we will, we will be working with people who are bidding for the project, uh, for, for an equipment supply and the project, which we are working on. Okay, sure. Uh, right. Um, I will get back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you so much. The next question is from the line of DA from Niveshai Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, sir. Uh, I just wanted to get the clarity on the industry, the usual industry perspective which we have. That is a 30-70 distribution between H1 and H2. So I just wanted to ask, uh, are we in line with the uh, performance in that particular metric? See, this again needs to uh, sort of uh, the, what do you call the guidance, but but as I said, sometime back, uh, the the you know H1 and H2 is anywhere between uh, one third and two third versus 60, 40, so or 70, 30, whatever number you take meters, it will be in that line. And and uh, obviously we are part of the sector, and our performance also would be in the similar line. Uh, also, for the three megawatt turbine, uh, are the realizations per megawatt or the EBITDA margins uh, per megawatt uh, slightly higher than the two megawatt series, or uh, how uh, how are we placed there? Let we don't give the model wise uh, guidance on what's happening, but because it's it's a, a overall uh, portfolio what we sell. Uh, the because it, it's it's we don't fix that way. It depends upon who, who is the customer and whatever the contract we take. It is it an equipment supply or is it equipment such place or an EPC. So there are a number of other factors. So therefore, it's not specific to saying that this is a model. This is what they will take. Will have. So realization, like uh, I'm talking just about the supply and uh, realization per megawatt remains the same, or uh, how is it uh, different from the two megawatt series? Yeah, you can assume it will remain the same. Okay, and uh, one being. more thing. Yeah, sorry. For the time being, because as we keep moving ahead, the cost load happens and things will be different. But initially, as yes, you can take the same. Sure. And uh, on the EPC, non-EPC side, uh, what, uh, we uh, in our order book, we currently have 47 to 53% kind of a mix. So uh, what was the number before, and uh, how are we looking to go ahead in the future? See, this is, uh, uh, this is also a sector issue. The, what's happening in the sector, if you look at it, is that uh, the, the EPC players are completely vanished from the scene, except us. Okay? Uh, uh, the, the largest... Uh, people who talk about they just only supply the components, not even the full turbine. So there are turbines getting supplied, but the corresponding capacity to build the BOP to take it to the commissioning is lacking today in the country. And uh, in our view that as we also look at in future, we see a significant risk of for turbines supplied lying on the ground but not getting commissioned. So uh, because of this, the, also the people earlier who worked with us and based on equipment supply are coming back to us and asking for EPC role. So that's why we are seeing uh, now uh, the, the, the 43 percent, 47 percent. What you see is an increase compared to what it was earlier. Uh, earlier, when I say is that last couple of years, I don't take it uh, uh, FS17 and before that time we used to do almost full EPC. Uh, now the more and more players are coming back and asking us to provide an EPC services. So we expect that that segment keep growing as we get more and more orders. Correct. But that's that's a, that's a concern for the sector as a whole. 
the because today you have more suppliers and less of the people who can do a uh, you know bridge the gap between the supply to the commissioning. Correct. Understood. Thanks a lot uh, for the for the answers. Uh, all the best for the future. Thank you. Thank you so much. Participants who wish to ask questions may please press star one at this time. The next question is from the line of Raj Rishi from DCPL. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can. Please go ahead. Yeah, I just want to find out what is the possibility of Suzdon maintaining its market share in a much uh, bigger market, like whatever market share you have presently, because others are also going to take part, right? And uh, Supposedly, a lot of uh, countries have overcapacity also. So, can you throw some light on this? Yeah, this, uh, uh, first of all, this overcapacity is a part of a myth. Okay. So, what actual capacity, what is the manufacturing capacity, what is the assembling capacity is completely different. So, I'm not getting into the details of that. As far as the market share for us is concerned, we define it a different way. Not as a market share. We say that if our, my capability, our capability to deliver is X, uh, whatever is the market, we should be in a position to deliver X. Take an example that uh, the, I can deliver 2 gigawatts. Don't hold me to the number. I'm giving an example. I can deliver 2 gigawatts. If the market is 5 gigawatts, you know, then my market share is different. And uh, if the market is 7 gigawatts, my market share is different. Instead of looking at the market share, what we're concentrating is on what is our capability and enhance our capability to deliver. And with respect to whatever the market can be complete and then deliver to our full capacity. I think that's how we'll deal with rather than the market share. Okay. Because the, the, if I do a 2 gigawatt, if the market does only 4 gigawatts, then it looks like a 50% market share. But then if the market does 8 gigawatts, then it becomes a 25 percent market share. But I'm still doing 2 gigawatts. Okay. So therefore, I think uh, uh, market share varies from the point of the capacity of overall, but we should be able to deliver to our full capacity. We should get orders, and then we deliver that. That is what is more important for us. And uh, one of the global majors was uh, Siemens Gamesa is having some issues. So is that expected to benefit Suzdon because one competitor being slightly out of the picture or something? I see. I I, I don't think that the today's in the market uh, there is there is enough play for everybody to do that. As I said, that sometime back, if I have a capacity, whatever is there today, we can actually get the orders. I don't see in the next at least for the next two to three years. Uh, guaranteed for two years, FA25 and FA26, and also pre presumably for FA27, uh, the, whatever is our capacity, we can go and get the orders. Competition uh, is not an issue. But what is important for us is to learn from what the issues they're facing and see that, you know, uh, learn from them and then doesn't get repeated for us. That's what is more important than looking at uh, somebody has got a problem, so they put advantage to us. That's not the way we're looking at it. We're looking at it from the angle of uh, what happened there and how do we ensure that it doesn't happen to us? Okay, okay. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you so much. The next question is from the line of C.A. Kavaljeet Singh from Balaji F. Investment. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening and uh, congratulations on a good set of numbers. Uh, I have two questions. First, whether Suzlon is uh, exploring any opportunities in uh, in solar power sector also, as uh, we are dealing with only wind power. Second, uh, what is the, uh, what will be the future run rate of the orders? Will the current run rate continue, or we will be going into a higher trajectory? Come again, the second question: whether the present run rate continues, or or uh, we will go into a higher trajectory of orders. Okay. On the, on the solar, obviously our strength is in wind because we manufacture wind uh, turbines. In solar, we don't manufacture anything. Having said that, we will, if, if there is a need be, we will get into solar. Where it is a hybrid project, somebody wants us to take the full responsibility for the entire project, we don't mind doing that, but otherwise we'll stick to our strength of wind. So not really, you know, solar specific projects we will not take up. Okay, so unless it, it, there's somebody says that, you know, if you're doing wind, you also, you also want you to do solar as part of hybrid, then we will look at that opportunity, not otherwise. Oh. On the, on the, uh, sorry? So, it, uh, 
are you currently bidding for such hybrid projects as such? No, we are not bidders. As I said some time back, we are never bidders either in wind or in the solar. The okay. bidders are IPPs or other people, and we only supply to those people, those bidders who uh, are successful in the bidding. Some of them have a free bid tie-up. Some of them come after winning the bid. But we are never a bidder in any of the projects. We did once, a long, long back in solar, and which we sold off all those projects. That's once upon a time, you know, like in, in 2015-16 type of uh, time. Otherwise, we don't bid. We are not bidders. And as far as the order book is concerned, uh, uh, it's growing, it's robust, and we expect uh, the, the orders will keep growing. I don't need, I, I don't want to put a number to what rate it will grow. But as I said in my opening comments, we are looking at uh, the orders which are uh, uh, quality orders and uh, the the quality counterparty, where we think that project would go ahead, not the taken order, then project gets stuck, and then uh, we get uh, the the decent good margins. That's our criteria, but there are enough. Uh, there is enough potential in the market. Interest-wise, for Sulan Bunch, there is. I, I can only tell you is that there is a uh, huge interest in terms of uh, placing orders in Sulan Bunch. Sulan. Okay, sir. Another question. Uh, we uh, usually see and uh, you get uh, uh, large orders. So, what value we should be assigning to a one order of a three a three megawatt uh, turbine? Uh, a ballpark number. So our average realization is, you know, uh, give or take uh, six crores per megawatt. Uh, so whether it's a two megawatt turbine or three megawatt turbine, I think it's supply. Yeah, for, you should continue with the same uh, economics, uh, unit economics. Thank you, thank you very much. For the scope of equipment supply. Okay, okay. Thank you. The next question is from the line of G1 from Seagull. Please go ahead. Hi, good evening. I'm G1 from uh, Tamil Nadu. Uh, first of all, I would like to congratulate your team for the excellent conduct for the last uh, three to four years. And you have made the company as a debt-free company. And uh, one, more, one question is, uh, it is not a question, uh, just uh, from uh, uh, Lane, Investors' angle, I am asking this. Uh, being your uh, share, uh, like face value, it is having two rupees. For a very long time, it was uh, looked at uh, like a penny stock in the market. So it was around four rupees to ten rupees. So now you have come back above thirty rupees. And is there any possibility to make it as a ten rupees paid up share and still you can boost up the uh, market value of the stock? So, sir, so we'll uh, take that suggestion into consideration. I mean, there is right now no uh, active plans to reverse split the stock. Obviously, you know, we'll have to see what are the overall implications from a legal, tax, companies, act, NCLT, various uh, law enforcement agencies' perspective. Um, so, while there's no current thought, but, uh, you know, we'll, of course, consider the idea at the appropriate time. Yeah, thank you very much, sir. Thank you so much. The next question is from the line of Rahul Kothari from Grid Equities. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. I have a question. Uh, this is with regards to understanding our uh, preference towards uh, taking an order, uh, whether it's uh, more towards a turnkey project or uh, towards uh, WTG equipment supply. And uh, uh, with regards to the estimate that is understood that 10 gigawatt of orders are expected from PSUs. How are we looking to uh, uh, build into it or uh, uh, supply uh, our products and services to that segment? See, equipment supply and EPC, we always tend to balance because uh, in EPC, uh, at the end of the day, uh, the, we need to look at what is our project execution capability, how much can we deliver projects in terms of uh, <clears throat> the land, to the connectivity, which like including the evacuation system. Uh, whereas equipment supply is that we know that we have a definite, capa definite capacity we can supply. So we always look at saying that how much we should take equipment supply, how much is EPC, and also EPC depends upon which state it is where we think the, the equation of the land is easier versus cumbersome process. So we keep we don't have a target per se, but uh, but we keep evaluating these factors, saying that, okay, if you reach certain level of EPC, then we think that, you know, for this year, 
uh, we, we significantly uh, you know uh, enlarged our uh, the project delivery capacity through this then we will limit there and get on the equipment supply so both will be there a uh, mixed wise so uh, the it depends upon uh, which state which project and what capacities and when and as far as the 10 gigawatts is concerned then obviously i just explained something that we don't bid but we support the bidders for those projects if uh, someone wants to have a pre bid tie up like earlier also we saw a pre bid tie up uh, or post winning the bid they come to us saying that we won the bid and we want to work with you for developing a project then we we'll work with them so more bid get more bid get awarded so that much is the universe keeps increasing for us for for the order intake uh, sir just one more uh, uh, on the clarity uh, on the understanding front uh with regards to uh, because on the wind fund there is generally a land a land mark with regards to the uh, wind speed and all and uh, uh, uh identification is done so as a suzla considering the large order uh, coming in place in future and so execution would be a challenge so do we have some uh, or do we explore the land acquisitions uh, pre uh, earlier or we depend on the customer to procure the land and everything See, the, the, for us, our, uh, when we talk about we can do EPC, our strength is basically the wind data because we have the, the largest number of masks and then the, the largest wind data available to us. So, therefore, we clearly know in each state, each state, when I say that all those eight windy states, which site is good, which site is what sort of generation gives. That's the knowledge what we bring in. So, we can, we can potentially, when somebody wants to ask for EPC, we say that this is the site with the wind data. we will tell for you because we may or may not have a land at that point of time then we work with them enter into a contract and we acquire along with them uh moving ahead uh, the till now uh, we used to do earlier but in between we stopped because of various things that we don't acquire the land bank but in case uh we are certain these are a very good sites and which can get into a, a contract let's say in the next uh, 8 to 12 months not locking up uh, the capital then we would also look at investing in the land but provided we are absolutely sure that you know we can convert that into a contract in a short period of time but not creating a land banks which are available for the next 5 years or 8 years sort of thing. no okay let's see from my side thank you thank you the next question is from the line of ba from nivesha investment advisors please go ahead uh thank you for taking my questions on upon the again uh i just had this doubt that if we are not uh, bidding directly and we are working with ipps in the offshore projects then how are we actually uh taking it forward because as i understand we don't have uh capacity uh, of you know uh, which are required for offshore turbines so i just wanted to get clarity on that No, no. The the offshore turbine is not required today because whenever whenever even somebody is winning the bid today, the wind turbine would be required, let's say, three to four years down the line. Okay, offshore is completely different uh, ball game. It's going to take a long time to come in. Uh, while we we do have an uh, the uh, under the technology under development various turbines. So in case we are going ahead with uh, offshore, not one off project, but we think that the offshore in India is going to pick up. then obviously we will uh, we will accelerate and get the first wind turbine out uh, for the first project to come in so therefore the partners when they talk to us they look at our time cycle versus the the project time cycle and that's how they go ahead and bid based on our turbine you don't need a turbine today for offshore okay thanks a lot sir thank you so much The next question is from the line of Shri Ram Rajan, from who is an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hey, thank you. Thank you. I, I, I suppose I'm audible. Um, yeah. Uh, congratulations on uh, great numbers and uh, just two questions. Uh, I was reading that Adani is already uh, got a five megawatt uh, turbine empanelled in MNRI. I uh, would that pose a competition given that they can generate more power with lesser line it is not the question of uh, uh more generation with less land it at the end of the day for anybody you uh, you know that you are an individual investor you would know that what matters is the cost per kilowatt hour okay or which model gives you the lowest cost per kilowatt hour the for the larger turbines in india today the cost per kilowatt hour is uh, 
low or whatever is higher. Okay, so okay. the current size. Uh, it, it all depends upon the wind. The current wind availability, the sites what are available today. The two megawatt, three megawatt would give you a, a lower cost per kilowatt hour than a five megawatt turbine. So therefore, we, in our opinion, that is not a constraint at all. So what we need to look at is that you know, will if they, that comes into market, our our product can it give better cost per kilowatt hour than that? And we do feel that yes, we can our three megawatts and two megawatts can give lower cost per kilowatt hour compared to a five megawatt turbine in the current sites. Current sites, okay, okay, fine. That's that's good. I, I didn't know this. Okay, thank you. The the other question was. Uh, let's assume we transition uh, over a period of time from two to three megawatts completely. What would be the amount of uh, gigawatts of turbines we can supply in a year? Basically, the capacity that we have. See, our our manufacturing capacity is anywhere between three to four gigawatts. Uh, because uh, let let's let's see that what is the capacity mean? Mostly our natural capacity is is for four gigawatts. You know. Tower is obvious. There are three components, natural tower and your blades. The tower is we do ourselves, plus we can outsource. So therefore, uh, there is no capacity constraint in terms of tower as long as in advance you book the fabrication capacity. So therefore, your capacity depends upon the blade manufacturing. For the blade manufacturing, number of modes what you put in your plants. So we, we assume that the capacity is, we will be able to sell is X and then we put the modes. But if we see that FI26, we can sell more then we'll quickly go ahead and put the molds in, in some of our existing plants and increase our capacity. So capacity won't be a constraint if there are going to be an order. Orders on a consistent basis, not that, you know, uh, we do one year peak and then subsequently it comes down. If you look at the two to three years, this is going to be the capacity, then obviously uh, the manufacturing capacity would be ramped up quickly, only the blade capacity, and then to meet that. Hello, Mr. Tyagi, you have any more questions? Uh, hello, uh, am I audible? Yes, yeah. Uh, my question is uh, on the uh, EPC front. Uh, you mentioned that uh, uh, the company is now expecting more uh, complete EPC orders instead of just uh, turbine supply. Um, what is the main driver for that? And uh, do you also see an improvement in O&M business? As uh, in recent years, we have seen more players uh, going to specialized uh, O&M service providers uh, instead of the turbine suppliers. On the EPC front, uh, uh, I clarified earlier, is that more is coming in because of the demand from the market. It's not that we want to do more EPC, but there's a demand in the market because, as I said some time back, uh, there is no OEM left in the country other than us who does EPC. Okay? Even the largest uh, competition in the market are uh, just supply the components. Okay? They don't even supply the turbine. They just uh, the tower. They just supply the nacelle and even the blades. Somebody wants, they can buy directly. Uh, but someone else has to bridge the gap between the turbine supply to erection commissioning, BOP, and everything. We do have a limited capabilities in the country for who can do that sort of a service. So therefore, and some people went ahead, uh, experimented that, and uh, there were some uh, bad experiences, some good experiences. So people uh, who have a bad experience want to get back into the EPC concept. That's the reason I said that there is more demand for EPC because we are the only people who provide E, P, and C services. So we don't give up. And the EPC, we provide EPC services. Understood. Uh, and, and the OMS front, on the OMS front, uh, uh, the uh, today uh, every single uh, contract what we sign for WDG supply, we only sign if there is a OMS contract followed by the supply of turbines. If uh, there is no OMS contract, we don't sign the supply contract as well. So for that, till now that has been our principle. So every uh, WDG we sell, we also have a OMS contract for that. So therefore our OMS business would continue to grow to the extent we keep selling our WDGs, that magnitude. On the other front, yes, there are uh, some small ISPs which have come in and uh, there are also some uh, uh, large IPPs looking at uh, their own, uh, uh, trying to do their own uh, OMS. 
our turbine, none of our turbines have gone away till now. In fact, uh, we recently we acquired 80 megawatts of Siemens Gamesha turbine uh, for operations by us, given to us by O2 Power. In fact, we are getting multi-mix motors to us. But having said that, uh, the we continue to improve our uh, standard of service and can, more importantly, continue to develop value-added products uh, so that you know, that benefits our customers in terms of improving uh, energy output or improving the reliability and various aspects. So that's the reason, that's how we want to retain our customers. All right. Uh, sorry, just one more question. Uh, what uh, do you think could be the likely capacity addition in FY24 and uh, FY25 <coughs> overall sector level? Uh, see, we gave a, our estimate earlier, also we gave it that we expect anywhere uh, midpoint is 4.4 4 minimum and 5 max this year is what our expectation is. And even if you look at uh, the H1 is 1.5, if you do double up that in H2, let's say it's 4.5. So that's, that's what is our guidance. We continue to believe that one. And in FI25, our expectation is it will go up to 6 to 7 gigawatts. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nikhil Abhyankar from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Thank you, sir. Thanks for the opportunity again. So, uh, so what is the quantum of order pipeline that you're looking at in the street in March and March 24? March and <laughs> we, we, right today we have uh, more than 1.6 gigawatts of order. And there is a significant order book, obviously, because of the confidentiality with uh, clients in the audience finders, we can't say how much it is, but there's a significant order pipeline which we're negotiating today. And that's when we conclude the order, then we come out and then basically announce. So I don't want to put a number to it, but there is a strong order pipeline which we're negotiating today. Understood. And also, sir, uh, for, uh, there are around four FDRE bids also open right now. And so are we also working with, with the IPPs to bid for Diggi's project? And what kind of wind proportion can we see in this bid project? See, it, it all, it all uh, depends. Sometimes the uh, wind proportion can be significantly higher, which dispatch uh, uh, this, this FDRE bids. Uh, the, if I, uh, I don't have the number right away with me for the current FDRE estimates. Uh, but what I, I remember the overall number is that in the 13 gigawatts of outstanding bits today, which are open, mm -hmm. the wind capacity is about 11 gigawatts. In some cases, the wind capacity is more than the bit capacity because, uh, uh, for example, that, you know, somebody wants to offer uh, a sort of an RTC power sort of a thing, and some people are saying that instead of getting into hybrid anything, I can actually, uh, let's say, you want 200 megawatt of uh, uh, the PPA you have and go ahead and set up 650 megawatts of wind. Mm -hmm. And on an annual basis, you meet the requirement of what is required, the PLF price. So therefore, wind capacity is going up. That's why I said that uh, I don't have a bid-wise, but total overall bid-wise in 13 gigawatts, the more than 11 gigawatts is wind. Okay. And are we working with IPPs on FDR bids as well? Yeah, we work. Yeah, yeah, obviously, the bidders remain the same, whichever the type of bid. The, the universe of bidders, uh, the companies remain the same. That whomsoever we have a relationship, we keep working on, on this. Like, like earlier, we had a PB tie up with uh, Aprava, we had PB tie up with Torrent, we had PB tie up with Semcorp, we had PB tie up with Hero. You name it, we had. So sometimes they have PB, sometimes they go ahead and then, uh, you know, beat and come back to us. So there is no need for uh, PB these days because the, everybody knows the market, what are the prices and things like that. It was, it was different when initially when the bits came up in the FI uh, 18. That the initial year of the bidding, then obviously people, everybody had a pre-bid tie-up. But now it's not necessary. Not even 50% uh, of the bidders have a pre-bid tie-up. Mm -hmm. Okay, sir. And so, uh, final question on Siemens Gamesa. So, uh, are we looking to acquire any of the uh, OLM uh, projects that they are uh, currently managing going ahead, whichever are coming for expiry? We all see. Uh, we we do a multi make. Uh, we are also working in a small way on the multi make. We are in the initial stages. We don't have significant capacity. We have uh, 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 more than little more than uh, close to about 200 megawatts. Or that 150 megawatt is what we acquired this year. As I said, sometime back, 80 megawatts of Siemens Gamesha, which O2 Power had, and uh, wanted us to develop, uh, do the OMS which we are doing it. 
obviously any offer such opportunity comes in we will def we are definitely open to do a multi make uh, whether it's Siemens Gamesha or it's Inox any make we would be open today we operate Delacon we operate uh, Inox we operate Siemens Gamesha machines capacity may be small but but all these people will do it and but that is one of our uh, uh, business models in OMS while we continue to do our own but we'll also look at opportunities to expand into multi make okay sir thank you thanks a lot and all the best Thank you. The next question is from the line of Neil Ostwal from Bajaj FinServe Asset Management. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hi, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, can you give some color on the uh, opportunity size of the C&I segment? See, today, if you look at our order book, uh, the two-third is C&I, so including the retail. So one-third is actually the bid capacity. So that's the rate what we're having today. So significant portion is in the actually. Okay, all right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pawan Gulati from Investor. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Uh, congratulations for the great set of numbers. Uh, Thank you. A couple of questions on slide 20. Uh, so basically, uh, first one, it mentions the installations and H1, that's half uh, a megawatt, and for Q1, the number was uh, 0.3 gigawatt. So, do you give the numbers in megawatt for both the purpose? That's one. And uh, the second question is that uh, we have a capacity of greater than 3 gigawatt, till our installations have been almost, uh, the run rate has been lesser than 1 gigawatt in the air. So, uh, what's our path forward to increased capacity utilization? Yeah. No, you're, you're, you're talking about supply? No. So, I'll, uh, on slide 20, I'll answer your question. Now. So, installations by Sujlam in the first half have been about half a gigawatt, you know, close to about 500 megawatts. Uh, and across the country, about 1.6 gigawatts of installations happened uh, in the first half of this financial year. So approximately, again, you know, if we take the market share dynamics just for the first half, this is installations where we are about 33%. Uh, the other matrices, is, uh, you know, for the H1, we've done 267 megawatts. That's in terms of deliveries. So in the H1, there's been deliveries of 267 megawatts of turbine, while installations have been 500 megawatts. Uh, I mean, difficult for us to give you a market share number, uh, of the deliveries because you know we are not aware of what the competitors are doing, but you know we can report our numbers. But um, MNRE reports to the new wind capacity that have got added, so that's how we are coming to the 33 percent. Also on the commissioning, uh, one to note is that the whole of last year we did uh, about 524 megawatt also. That that's what we actually reached in the H1 already. Correct, sir. Uh, but sir, my question was that really we have a higher capacity of three gigawatt a year. And we have the open orders as well. So basically, what would be our path to higher installations on a quarterly? Uh, yeah, see, yeah, it's it's a uh, um, obviously we can't give that guidance, but I can say is that order book is one thing, and the delivery schedule is different because each project is unique. Uh, if it is an equipment supply, we, uh, they will have their own schedule in terms of when they want the turbine. Uh, one is looking at the day site readiness. And uh, even where we have an EPC sort of a thing where we are responsible for everything, still people, some of them have asked for rescheduling the supplies because the evacuation system is getting delayed. You know? The substation from which their product gets uh, evacuated is getting delayed. So this is now a dynamic situation. So depending upon the need of the project and also the where the, the evacuation capacity is happening, the schedule is keep changing. So I'm, we may have an order and also order may have been booked for this year. But the still the clients can come back and say that my evacuation is not happening or I'm, I'm, I'm getting delayed in terms of my land equation, so they put this postpone. So uh, that's what that's what keep happening, that which is what we keep working with every client independently for on each project. That's what that's what would decide the how much we can supply. Yes, sir. We can we can supply, but but provided the, if the projects are not ready to take that much capacity, then then uh, obviously you know uh, what do we do with that? And they, they won't even pay us. They won't even take the bank and pay. All right, sir. Thank you. 
Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amit Nigam from Invesco Mutual Funds. Please go ahead. Hi, good evening. Uh, I had two questions. Uh, when I look at the finance cost line of the PNL, uh, sequentially, uh, would the trajectory be a sharp drop or a more gradual drop? That's one. And second is when I look at your cash flows uh, on a console basis for the first six months, I see a significant deployment in the working capital lines. Uh, so does that give us uh, some visibility to a better execution coming up in the second half? Thanks. So much I'll answer both your questions. Uh, so on the first one, uh, with regards to interest costs, uh, yes, as I said in my opening comments, uh, certainly you will uh, uh, see a sharp drop in the finance costs in Q3. Uh, up to now, uh, for the six months or the H1, um, our finance cost has been about close to about 90 crores uh, for the first six months. And uh, that's largely been because of the debt that we had on the balance sheet, um, which has got repaid around the end of August. Um, so for a large part of the Q2 also, until the QIP proceeds were realized and repaid to the lenders, um, that interest cost line is uh, figuring in the quarter two. So Q3 will see a sharp, uh, sharp decline in the interest cost uh, for sure. Uh, to answer your second question, um, uh, you know, working capital uh, is, is um, I would say, is an issue in the business. Uh, you know, we are working as a company to, you know, further optimize that. Um, and yes, you are right that uh, if you see the cash flow, there is significant working capital deployment uh, currently as we speak. Um, so, and you know, whilst we have the 1.6 gigawatts uh, in confirmed orders, so certainly we are... Uh, uh, very, very focused on uh, executing those orders in the uh, quickest and most profitable manner possible. And, full, and, and, and so is it, would it be uh, prudent to conclude that uh, March uh, 31 uh, in 2024, the balance sheet, especially on the working capital line items, would be much lighter from where we are today? Uh, may not be lighter uh, from where we are today. Again, you know, I would like to uh, review working capital always as a percentage of overall sales, uh, either, you know, trailing or forecasted because, um, uh, you know, wherever we end March 24 uh, net working capital act, um, that could be representative of the investments that we've made for uh, deliveries to be done in March 25. Uh, so I don't think in absolute rupees crore terms uh, it may be a lighter number, but in uh, percentage terms for uh, the business that the company would deliver going forward, uh, it would certainly be lighter in that proportion. So I think you're saying it will be more efficient, right? Yes, certainly. Thank you, Manchu. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Deepesh Agarwal from UTI Asset Management Company. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening, gentlemen. Uh, sir, my first question is, uh, is it fair to say entire order book of uh, 1613 megawatts will be executed by March 25? Yeah, right now the orders, what we have is, that's, your, 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 that's right, the order book what we have is uh, for FA24 and FA25. Uh, the order in the pipeline, uh, what we are now negotiating, we are discussing, or, or, or there, there are some which will go into FI25 and FI26. But, but the current order book, what is uh, shown, 1.6 gigawatts, is for FI24 and FI25. Nothing is still over the order. Okay, so for FI25 incremental orders, uh, anything which we get in next one or two months can possibly go into FI25, right? Yeah. No, the what is now happening uh, is that the orders what are coming in and forth so are this the, the or dep depends upon the size. Okay, if we get uh, 50 megawatt uh, or uh, the you know type of orders that will be for FI25. But let's say that if you get a large order for 200 or 300 megawatt, then it could be for FI25 and FI26. Even if you get in the next two, two months. Okay, so basically, if we take the uh, formula which you gave earlier in the call. Second half is typically 2x, so assuming you do a 500, 550 megawatt in second half, we have 1100 available for execution in 25 plus any incremental order you get which is uh, which can be executed in 25, right? Yes. Okay. 
guidance well, your numbers are right. So I can't, I can't, I can't find fault with your arithmetic. <laughs> so the other question is, if I look at your other book, almost half of your other book is in Karnataka. Uh, so what is the status of the transmission connectivity out there? I guess there were some substations which were to be installed, which are getting delayed out there. Anything which impacts us out there? Yeah, it does. The, like some time back I was saying, in fact, in the sense that there could be some people, like especially for this year's supplies, okay, so they can say slightly delayed because substation is getting delayed for the next year. So there are, uh, you are right, there are a couple of substations which are uh, delayed, which are expected to come, uh, I think, end of this year and early next year. So there would be some readjustment of delivery schedule. Is, that is what would be the impact on us. Otherwise, the connectivity and that is not our responsibility. That's the responsibility of the client. So we would not have anything, uh, only to the extent that the, uh, if they know in advance uh, that that's going to get delayed, then obviously they would like to reschedule uh, the supplies, you know, move it by two months, move it by one month, move it by three months. That sort of things can happen. That would be the impact on us. Karnataka is, uh, uh, conservation Karnataka is basically, the reason is that till now, uh, as you know that the, uh, all the bidding was happening on uh, the you know site uh, state diagnostic because you can put it anywhere so everybody would go towards where the higher wind because that's the only way you can win win the bid so initial uh, the, all projects came up in Gujarat and uh, Tamil Nadu then obviously Gujarat has some concerns with respect to land which they removed now uh, the, the only other option was uh, the Karnataka the so option was available for MP Rajasthan AP anywhere but people didn't put up there because uh, there you will get lesser PLFs compared to Karnataka. But now with the full tariff concept, the, those states are getting opened up. The concentration in Karnataka is that is the reason. Okay. So, uh, if there is a delay in the transmission, it also differs our revenue, right? Come again? If there is a delay in transmission line being set up, it also differs our revenue or we get to our revenue with only the final uh, commissioning that which is left? Now, contractually, <laughs> it doesn't differ. But then, you know, if they are repeat clients, we have a relationship with them and they know in advance, let's say, 10 months in advance that it's going to be delayed, they'll come and ask us, saying that, then can you please reschedule some of his supplies? So we oblige. If we oblige that, then there, there could be some difference. Contractually, no. So we have agreed to a schedule when they need to take the turbines that way. But then, you know, uh, when, when you work on a relationship with a repeat client, then obviously you would tend to agree with them uh, some revisions, if, if feasible, if feasible. It's not necessary that, you know, it's always feasible to reschedule the supply. Okay. But if you reschedule, agreed uh, mutually and reschedule, yes, there would be an impact on the top line. But then what will happen is that some other sites could be there, so we will fill up that during that period of time. It's question because we're doing multiple contracts, so some cases we can advance because they would may be ready, but earlier we didn't agree to supply that time because we were to supply to this project. So now we can, you know, switch and supply to that project. That's, that's how we plan when you have multiple contracts. Uh, sir, lastly, what is the status on the CapEx which we were doing for the moles for the 3 megawatt uh, turbine? Is it ready and uh, can we start shipping those turbines from uh, 3Q or we'll have to wait for the 4Q for that? We already started supplying commercially then about 5 or 7 turbines got dispatched already and then uh, we, we, we are now doing a commercial product which will gradually pick up in Q3 and Q4. Uh, but significantly uh, ramp up will happen next year, obviously. But then you will see a reasonable capacity going out in this year, especially in Q4. And the CapEx plan for moles is uh, on track. Uh, so, you know, whatever number of moles we need, uh, we already have uh, three moles in operation uh, and on transit, and uh, the rest will be in play by end of this quarter or early Q4. Sure. Thank you, and all the best. The next question is from the line of Dhruv Muchal from HDFC Mutual Funds. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thank you so much, sir. So, uh, looking at the industry situation in terms of increasing demand uh, and particularly, and also your positioning in terms of the EPC uh, service that you probably uniquely provide, uh, very few players provide. Uh, so, uh, is there a possibility or probably some discussions that you're already having uh, the scope for margins that you earn? for your uh, services, plus the working capital cycle that we have in the business of improving versus what we, you know, we're thinking the last three months or six months or last one year. So some thoughts there, sir, please. Uh, 
See, on the, on, the, on the improvement of working capital from the client side, we had done significantly already in the last couple of years. So the, the, the change of payment terms, we said uh, we would like to get payments on the component supply basis and the turbine supply basis. So they've done adequate work, but at the same time, there's always a scope for improvement, asking them to open their fees and things like that. So that, that does exist in terms of uh, the, the improvement of working capital cycles based on orders. Okay. And so on margins? See, margins, uh, we, we, we gave a guidance on the margins. I think uh, right now we stick to that margin rather than saying that, okay, demand. See, uh, the, the, for the repeat customers, we really don't want to go say that because the demand is higher, uh, it's now a suppliers market, we want to improve our margins significantly. That, that's not the way to work uh, with the repeat customers. But some uh, customers, the CNA segment, other things, we might improve the margins. But our guidance remains the same as whatever we said earlier, the margin wise per megawatt. That won't, we, do, we wouldn't like to change that guidance. Right. And so the second question is uh, probably uh, just to understand uh, if it would be too early, but uh, uh, we are seeing some intensity by Chinese uh, equipment suppliers, you know, increasing. Uh, we are hearing about Europe uh, trying to impose some restrictions on Chinese. I'm not sure how, uh, you know, relevant this is for India. Uh, and uh, I was looking at some data. The uh, the cost for them seems to be very low versus probably globally, even for India versus India. So can that be a threat to uh, the industry in India and also to you? Or the dynamics are very different in India and has no implication? Let, uh, let, let me answer this from the industry perspective rather than looking at uh, Suzlan. I don't want to get into that issue of what happened with Suzlan. Uh, the... the Many of these suppliers, as I said, sometime back, uh, issue is that, you know, they are component suppliers rather than uh, PPC suppliers, okay? When I say component, not even WTC, they are willing to supply just the nacelle, not even tower, not even the plate. So, uh, and uh, some people think that that's the best way, then, you know, I can reduce my cost. But ultimately, how much capacity do we have uh, capability building in the country in terms of bridging the gap between supply versus commissioning is a major issue. So, which is a concern uh, the, the government also is having now. In fact, they started monitoring the number of turbines on the ground uncommissioned, because, which is going up now today in the country. Uh, yes, they do have uh, uh, the, uh, the advantage of the price, because uh, the, many of them are actually assembling it here than the manufacturing here, even whether whatever manufacturing they make, it's raw material completely imported from there. Then they do have advantage there in terms of uh, subsidies, in terms of uh, power cost, so various things. So their their input cost is lower. So that's that's a known fact. So but but then the uh, the ma their manufacturing component in India is much less. It's more of an assembling here is happening. So the challenge for them yeah. will always be that you mentioned the uh, combining it with service. So that execution challenge will always be uh, a problem. For well, for the bidders, ultimately, the, why I said that we're getting more demand for EPC mm -hmm. is that you know how much of this, how many of these clients really can think of. Uh, partnering with someone else because nobody does on their own. You need a partner to build your uh, projects. So, uh, the, do we have really a capability built up in the country for doing uh, 7 gigawatts to 10 gigawatts? What we're talking about in terms of VOP is what is a question one has to ask. Supplies can happen. People can dump the turbines on the ground. But at the end of the day, as a country, what we need is not the turbines dumped on the ground, but turbines commissioned, connected to the grid. So, that as an industry, we're going to face that issue, and which is now slowly is coming on the ground. Sure, sir. Great. Thank you so much and all the best, sir. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rahul Kothari from Grid Equities. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, so, uh, just checking up the earlier question forward. So, these uh, imported uh, and uh, assembled parts, uh, these kind of orders are also applicable like uh, in the PSU tenders also or it's more towards the C&I, IPP, private IPP domain? That's one thing. Does it? Uh, second is on, just to further understand on the competitive landscape from domestic and international front. So I understand that in wind there are three domains: uh, equipment supply, then uh, POP, and then third is the OMS. So uh, specifically on OMS, uh, for uh, us, for our own supply, we don't see any competition, right? What we are looking for is the already OMS in place, which are where other players' uh, products are supplied. So can you just elaborate on the on the front of the competition? And uh, thirdly, thirdly, was just one more question to add in. Thirdly, regarding how do we look at the uh, 
weightage of like 2 gigawatt uh, uh, 2 megawatt and 3 megawatt proportion in our revenue book going forward in fy25 if we look into yeah on the on the first one uh, the i to my knowledge there is no restriction on uh, in tss because it's basically uh, rlmm listed equipment is what people buy uh, uh unfortunately in rlmm listing it talks about either you manufacture or you assemble so you still get qualified for rlmm listing so once you are listed in the rlmm uh, and today there i don't think there are any restrictions for pss to to my knowledge i'm not, I'm not, I'm not completely authentic on that but that's what i feel is the thing because they are listed in rlmm and they are listed there because uh, assembly is also allowed in rlmm so so therefore that's the question number 1 and question number 2 uh yes you are right the there there two issues on oms one is our own fleet other one is uh, the multi make what we acquire from others <clears throat> even in uh, our turbines i i, I don't think uh, it's it's a uh, right or part to say that there is uh, no worry because the people uh, there are isps which are there in the market so they are setting up some sort of a uh the what do you call unsustainable benchmarks in terms of pricing in terms of performance parameters what they are guaranteeing plus some of the large ipps thing that they can operate so therefore there is a pressure on us in our even our work fleet to ensure that our service remains high and then we keep providing value added services as i said mentioned earlier so that's that that's a recognized fact that we do recognize that even in the, our own turbine things we need to be careful to protect our stuff we know we've been able to do that and we hope we'll continue to do that in future and uh, the as far as the the uh third question was you said international that i i sorry you asked too many questions so i forgot your third question how to say you could add more proportion of revenue with this from coming from 2 megawatt and 3 megawatt uh, turbine going forward in fy 25 26 Uh, it will it be more tilted towards uh, 3 megawatt now going forward see right now obviously when you look at our order book uh, the uh, the significant portion is for 3 megawatt today than the 2 megawatt but having said that the uh, it depends upon which sites where some sites you know 2 megawatts competes better than 3 megawatt so we we are agnostic and and i think the most of the people the clients would be more more for the cost of lower tower but as there is a psychological feeling that you know Uh, a psychological preference for a 3 megawatt being a larger turbine maybe number of footprints will be less and things like that but we expect that fy25 we will continue to have both maybe in the ratio of 2 uh, is to 1 or a uh, uh, little the different but that, that's around that is what we can think that 2 megawatt and 3 megawatt in fy25 will be okay okay thank you thanks thanks a lot thank you The next question is from the line of Sumuka, who is an individual investor. Please go ahead. Mr. Sumuka, your line is unmuted. You can please ask your question. Yeah, let's go ahead. We can take the next question. If there are any, otherwise we can end the call. Okay. So, well, as the current questioner has left the queue, we would take that as our last question. On behalf of ICICI Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.